Dave's done a really, really good job as the captain. He's got mad passion for the game. I um, mean, he moved all the way up from South Australia. It's been great. It's gone through a rough time, and he's, uh, the way he's brought himself out of that and then guided us this year, it's been great. And then ever since July last year, when I first had the conversation with him, uh, he's just been trying to get me better every point. You know, um, advice is great. He's just a real leader, yeah. So he's, he's perfect for the job. He's one of the most dedicated guys for training, and it's really shown he's, you know, he was always a good player, and now he's a great player yeah. and a great captain. It's a warm Thursday morning, and David Black is out drill training. He's preparing for an upcoming tournament next weekend. But unlike many sports, however, Dave is not practising his dribbling or kicking any goals. He's out practising his shot accuracy for paintball. I started playing paintball in Adelaide. I was born and bred in Adelaide uh, about 99, I think I started playing, 98, uh, just recreationally. And then I got the bug then and there and started just trying to get on any team I could. Um, late, uh, so early 2000, um, Sapper, I formed Sapper and then started playing in the South Australian League. And then from there, just worked my way up into playing for, in, in Sydney and, and playing for Sydney SWAT. Sydney SWAT is a paintball team that competes in the professional division of the Super 7s tournament at Action Paintball Games in Rouse Hill, only about an hour northwest of Sydney CBD. Dave has been captaining the team for the past two years, but his journey to make it there took far longer. I was playing for a Sydney team called Shenanigans, a great bunch of guys, good team in the pro division, and a Queensland team prior to that to get any spot I could. But um, the, the word came down from the captain at the time uh, for SWAT, Ringo, and he said, um, look, there's a spot available, but you need to be here. Um, and so I made the decision then. The paintball was everything to me. I, I was training um, between the gym, field training, weekend training, uh, three or four nights a week kind of thing. Uh, it was pretty much my life at that point. So if I, I wanted to, South Australia had reached its, its the, the peak of what I could do in South Australia. Um, I was flying over here every three weeks to train. It was, it was a lot. At this stage, there was no turning back for Dave and he only had one clear direction in which to head. So I sold up everything. Um, I quit my job, said goodbye to my family, uh, came over here with uh, as much money as I could save and found a job, set up, um, crashed on couches until I could get a place and then um, uh, made a team. It's now an early Friday morning and the start of the 2018 DLX Cup, the third tournament of the Super 7 Series this year that Dave and Swat have been competing in and training for for up to three to four days a week for the past month. The scene is set and the team is confident. That's set up as a, what we call an M7 format, which was based off the European League with a race two concept. So it's seven guys on a roster, five guys on the field with two reserves that can chop and change in during a match. We run four divisions in the Super 7s from novice all the way through to the professional league, which is open to international uh, pro players. And uh, that seems to be going pretty well for us right now. Um, the last two events, all the top three divisions have been booked out, usually six or seven weeks before the event. So the problem is actually not being able to take more teams right now. Paintball is uh, kind of like, in, in summary, it's, it's a, um, a physical game of chess, essentially, um, but we're shooting instead of uh, moving pieces. Um, so what you want to do in paintball is there's five aside. Um, you have reserve players. Um, the aim of the, the game is to, uh, in regulation time, your five will go forward with their, against their five, and you want to hit their buzzer. Their buzzer point is scored for your team. Then there's a two minute timer, everyone resets, where you get more paint, more air, cleans down, goes back on, and the regulation time starts again. Uh, and that's it. Every time you shoot someone with a paintball gun, they're eliminated off the field. Um, so shooting players obviously makes it easier to get to that buzzer. Um, you pretty much want to get all five. Occasionally, you might one or two might be left, but the game is to shoot the opposition out, touch their buzzer as many times as you can in regulation time, and that's it. So it's, it, it's, once you take that down to the, the nitty gritties of what you're trying to do, it's a, an easy sport to follow. Paintball is an action sport played across Australia and around the world. There are estimated to be hundreds to thousands of players playing every weekend, either recreationally, through scenario paintball, or with the tournament format. 
These paintballs, as they are commonly known, are actually just a gelatinous base shell filled with a water-soluble vegetable oil dye mixed at different colours and grades depending on what tournament style you need. The different grades of paintball are usually marked by the toughness of the shell or the brittleness and the diameter of the ball itself. SWAT has started the weekend off strong, winning both their games on Friday and Saturday, and Dave has been ensuring that every player is keeping their cool in the heat of the moment. On the field, um, once we know the plays, as a captain I tend to play the three roll uh, at the back line to uh, basically keep the communication going, keep the guys calm. Um, a lot of what we're about is, is on the field is, is quite calm communication and talking, whereas people who guest for us, they're like, the team does communicate very calmly. Listen to me, Jamie! Stay tuned! Which one? Yep. Yep. That's Jeremy's gonna go round and she's gonna can. Okay. Which way am I shooting? Uh, forward. Don't shoot at Jeremy. Okay. okay. Shoot for the middle? Yeah, no, shoot for the head. Shoot for Callie. Heads up. Sorry? Yeah, snake, snake shot. I'm gonna shoot back center snake. Alex, yeah, Alex, One minute for me! We're sending Jeremy Lightning to draw attention. One minute! Hey, Daniel, tell Jeremy to shoot for the Angelo! Angelo! Mexico! Mexico! Alongside Dave and the team is Alex Orr, who's the longest running member of SWAT. He's also considered to be one of the best players in Australia. Solid player, makes Dream Team every year. Just, uh, he's a, a very good gunfighter. Even the American players that come over recognise Alex Orr as probably one of the best corner players in Australasia. Very good player, good guy, good paintball brain, and the rock for the team in a lot of cases. We, we can always rely on Alex to do his job. For senior players like Alex, the passion to keep playing has long outlived the financial and physical tolls of the sport. If I played at the, the top level in, in Sydney or in Australia for four years and left, it would be an achievement. You know, I, I want to I be able to bring up some, some of the younger guys to, to be able to fill the shoes that I've, I will potentially leave behind if and when that, that day comes. You know, like young guys like Jeremy Fitton and, and Ryan Jacker and stuff like that, I mean, they've, they've only been playing pro for, I think, a max of two years. You know what I mean? I've been doing that for over a decade now. So, I've, you know, I, I want to be able to get them to sponge off some of the stuff that I've learned over that period. And, Mainly it's just for the rest of the squad, that's why I'm here. You know, I mean, if it, if it wasn't for those guys, I, wouldn't, I would have stopped playing years ago if it wasn't for those guys. Jacker is our new pickup this year and possibly the most driven and motivated paintball player I've ever seen. He, he trains three nights a week like I used to. He, he goes to the field, he'll show up to the opening of a letter. If he's, not, if he's not at training, he'll be off playing an event somewhere. He just plays lots of paintball. But his game depth in his first year on us has, has massively improved. After being introduced to the sport by his friend Jeremy Fidden, the intense nature of paintball is what lured Ryan to start playing as well. Well most people say adrenaline because it doesn't really, you don't really get much out of any other sport of a, like here as you would here but um, I'd probably say it keeps me fit um, and before this I was probably just you know drinking away in paycheck you know like just doing the normal thing at that age or well, I suppose you know semi-normal. What do you think of the paintball community? Do they get along? Like you have your rivalries, but uh, most of the time it gets left on the field, yeah. which is good. But probably just the team, you know, like, and Syndicate and my old team and Sydney SWAT are a really tight-knit group. So it's just feel, it sort of just feels like another family to get away from stuff, you know, from the real world. <laughs> Despite its modest player count compared to other sports, this niche group of people have formed a tight community that can come together and leave their disputes on the field. It's all, it's all a big extended family, like everybody, I mean yesterday I just saw a guy that I hadn't seen for four years and we shook hands, gave a quick hug like we were brothers again, you know what I mean, I'm, it's amazing the amount of love that goes through that community, you know, I mean I've, I've made lifelong friends and uh, you know, out of this sport and they don't even live in the country. On the field we just want to hurt each other and we'll scream at each other and if it's a penalty go out or a guy overshoots you, you want to go throttle him and, and it's, it's, it's an adrenaline moment, but off the field we're all really good mates. For Dave, however, the community had never meant more to him than with the passing of his mother last year. 
for me, I was very humbled by how good the, the community was, by how much, when I, when I needed a group of uh, uh, friends to help me through some, some, some pretty serious stuff, I had two, three hundred friends. You know, just from everywhere. Partners of players were messaging me and saying, you know, can't do anything, and do you want to come out and have dinner and so forth. Um, it was just, and it was Australia. Well, actually, it was worldwide. I had people from the US and so forth just saying, you know, sending well wishes. It was, it was really, really humbling to see um, that that kind of community gets behind a player. Paintball was first introduced in America in the 1980s and has grown significantly there across all formats of the game. Ryan Greenspan, who formed the most successful team in the world over the last 18 years and was recently named an ambassador to the sport in 2012, says that the potential for the sport to grow here has been limited. It's really difficult how uh, to get paintball kind of more recognized. Like, it's a very touchy subject with the guns, and, and especially in the US, like, uh, the guns are a very touchy subject, you know? And, you know, it, just to get it more well recognized, also with uh, esports just taking a huge chunk out of pretty much all athletic sports in general, you know, it's, it's very difficult for sport, uh, for sport like paintball to really get off the ground. It's expensive to play, uh, it's not easy to play, or it's not easy to get really good at. Paintballs can be fired up to 90 metres per second at around a rate of 32 balls per second. However, in tournament modes, they are usually capped to only about 10 to 15 balls per second. It's certainly not a toy to be played around with, but at the same time, paintball markers are considered to be quite safe. Every state, most states are it's a firearm. Um, some states like New South Wales right now, it's a prohibited firearm. And uh, it's just the government made the decision when paintball came along in the uh, late 80s um, that um, they were a firearm. Uh, which is kind of weird because uh, you know most other countries, they paintball guns don't generate enough joules of energy to classify as a firearm almost anywhere else in the world. In New South Wales, the minimum age to play paintball is 16, and you have to be 18 before you can acquire a paintball gun through a firearms license. Typically, with paintball, it's an it's an established older person's game. You know, you need to be only mid 20s to afford it, to have the but to still have the speed to play it. Um, and at that point, people are you know starting families, doing other things. They don't want to play it, and that's impacted on our uh, turnover of new players. So the leaky bucket is not getting filled at the moment. The age limit is, it, it makes it more difficult. So uh, just progressing as a paintball player makes it more difficult. Whereas in the US you can start at 10 years old, you have to be 16 or 14. And I believe that they're working with a lot of the laws and it's getting a lot more lenient, but it's pretty difficult. I can't even bring my own equipment out here. But after years of lobbying, the paintball industry has finally made some breakthrough with the New South Wales government. For us now, that's what's helped us. Uh, you know, with our new laws that went through a couple of weeks ago, um, where paintball guns are no longer going to be a firearm. So, and that's something that both the firearms registry and the New South Wales Police wanted to have happen four or five years ago. Mike has also successfully lobbied to reduce the minimum age to play paintball to 12, which will give the sport an opportunity for grassroots growth. You can't, you can't start somebody out that's going to be 18, almost a full-fledged man or, or, or you know, woman of, of age considered an adult in the country, you can't expect them to go pro in four years. One of the, one of the greater things that's sort of you know, set another little fire underneath me about staying is that the, the laws have just been you know, amended in, in a way, it'll be sure mid next year, but I mean, I got a 13 year old boy that's gonna be into that as soon as that happens. So he's got just about every, every hand me down he can dream of coming his way. After a long weekend, SWAT won the 2018 DLX Cup in a final against Ryan Greenspan and the New Zealand-based team Expendables. They didn't lose a single game and won the first prize of $5,000. After a break, the team will be back training in the lead-up for the final tournament of the year in November, the Paintball Shop Masters. I'm pretty ecstatic actually. It's uh, it's been a, a long grind to this point, and the boys have really pushed hard. But it makes the the uh, win all that more uh, rewarding. Yeah. So what are you guys going to do now? Uh, we're probably going to celebrate. Uh, this is Jack's first pro win, so um, and uh, my partner's first time she's seen us win a pro event. So uh, I think uh, 
probably some liver poisoning for that guy. Um, and uh, yeah, I think a bit of a celebration is due. So for all the hard work, definitely. Good reward time. Uh, winning first place, Sydney Swat. Again, for me, it is a way of life. I, 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 I'd quit jobs, I'll move state, I'll change anything to maintain paintball as a sport. Um, some people often refer to it for them as a hobby, um, which is fine. You can make it a hobby if you want. But uh, I, I don't like when they refer to the sport as a hobby as a whole because it's not. For me, it is a way of life. It has dictated the ebb and flow of the direction I've gone in and the people I've met. And uh, and I'm, I would not, never change a thing. I wouldn't change anything about it. It's been a really great journey. And in some ways, it's only just ramping up now. So um, it, painful to me is everything. It really is. It, it's it's the, the, the rock that I build my life. That I've built my life on for the last 20 years.